Well, hi guys and welcome back to Jubilee Road. Uh, this is the first time in 2016 that I've talked to you. So, just before we start, I hope you had a great Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. I know it's a bit late, but this is the first time I've been able to talk to you. So, as, you, as I said, you, I would be doing a review. This is the first one of the year. And today we'll be looking at the gorgeous GNR C1 Atlantic, uh, which you can see in front of you. Now this is an exclusive model to Locomotion Models, which is from, well, basically in the National Railway Museum, which you can see the little logo uh, there. Uh, yes, I ha am in a slightly different place. I'm trying out a new style of doing these reviews. See if we can make the engines look even better. Um, so at the end, just let me know if you think this is a good idea. Right, let's get on the review. So here is the engine itself. We just turn it around there, and you can see exactly what it is. There we go. It's a GNR Atlantic C1, number 251 in GNR lined green. And there you can see it says produced ex uh, exclusively for the National Railway Museum, and is 21 pin DCC ready, which is good. So, let's take it out of this outer sleeve, which is quite nice actually. A little bit stiff as usual, but it's not such a bad thing. And we got the engine in a usual uh, block of ice in here. So let's try and. It's the best way. I think it's the best way is to try and turn this upside down. Oh, well, that kind of worked. That kind of worked. Uh, so we got the usual. Yeah, the usual diagrams here. Uh, K forms. You know, I don't really need to show you. I don't suppose because it's the same in every single loco. Got the exploded diagram so anything breaks, you can order it from Bachman. And it tells you how to fit the decoder as well. Which is always quite handy, isn't it? So if we get the engine back into shot again. Uh, as usual, you just slide this sleeve straight off. Can be a bit... Uh, yep, this one's really stiff, actually. Okay, that's done. Just remove that out the way. So does it... And then we just lift this flap up here, and up it comes. Right, I do have a little length of track here, so I'll put the engine on that and we'll have a nice look at uh, at the details. Once we get out of the box, that is, come on, here we go. I'll pop it on the track and we'll uh, have a better look at this thing. Right now I've got the, uh, the local on the little bit of uh, spare track they had lying around. We'll have a look at the front first. Um, just wow. There is so much separately fair fitted details on this. So we'll run uh, through them a little bit. At the top here you've got the lamp irons and you've got another one just there. The smoke box dart is also separately fitted. And we've got some more the lamp irons across there. Um, no sprung buffers. That honestly doesn't matter but they are metal which is nice. Um, if I just turn it round, we got the number, which is 251. Um, there are a lot of se uh, holes, as you can see, in the buffer beam. Now, there is a massive parts bag for this loco. But, as usual, at uh, Jubilee Road, things like to disappear. And at the moment, I'm not 100% sure where it is. But this does come with a parts bag, just to, uh, to uh, let you know. So, if we turn the engine around and sort of go to this side. Guys, this thing is absolutely gorgeous looking. So at the sides there is loads of detail. Just bring it nice and close for you. You've got the cylinders here. Very small, aren't they? But that's probably right for the um, era this engine was built. Uh, we've got loads of rivets on the running plates here. There's a nice maker's plate. If you can just see it shining there, just by my finger. That's really nice. Uh, this engine is a 442. An odd wheel, real way. Uh, try and I just can't talk sometimes. An odd wheel arrangement uh, for a more modern loco. But as you can tell, this thing isn't modern by no means at all. Um, we got the little step in the middle just by the drivers. Uh, this handrail is completely separately fitted and is metal, which is fantastic. And we got these two uh, things. I guess they picked up brass. Yeah, brass color of. The, on the top of the main driving wheels. So if we go a bit further, we got the great de under frame detail here 
nice lining, you've got the leaf springs there, done fantastic by Bachman. And we got the number 251 and plenty more separately fitted handrails. Are they metal? Indeed they are, fantastic. So now we'll move on again to the, the tender of this loco. Looking really good, uh, nice uh, GNR, which is Great Northern Railway, which became the LNER Railway. They sort of go it went in into one sort of company. Um, then we got all loads of detail down on the uh, round the wheels. All the suspension is in, and it's just brilliant. And we got another separately fitted handrail just here. Really awesome. So if we just turn the engine round again, so we can have a look at the rear of the engine. So at the back then we've got more separately fitted details, we've got some lamp irons and we also got some uh, where the separately fitted parts are actually go in. Uh, buffers again are nicely done in metal and we got the small NEM coupling just here. And round this side of the loco, well it's it's virtually the same, there's not much there's, well, there's no difference at all on this side of the loco. Now I'm going to pick the camera up and show you some other details that we can't quite see so far. So if I just pick the camera up slowly, to, if in there there is frame detail. You can just see it nicely picked out in the red. Really like that. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to get the cab detail. Now this normally is a bit of a pain to try and film, but we're going to do the bit. Aha, yes. Just in there, guys, you've got absolutely fantastic cab detail. Just there. That has to be one of the best detailed cabs I have seen on a British, uh, on a British model. Fantastic job there, to be honest, Backman. Zoom back out a bit. And then we've got the funnel there and the dome. Quite a large gap from the dome to where the whistle and safety valve is, isn't it? Don't know if... yeah. Uh, that's looking really good. And then we come to the tender. The coal load is a little bit shiny, but it is removable, so that's always good. We've got this nice sort of... Well, I don't know if you call it a railing? I don't think you would, but it's separately fitted all the way around the back of the tender. And then on the top, we've got the water filler. So there's plenty, you can even see the cab floor, look. Wow. Let me just put it back so we can nicely see it again. So details wise, this engine is absolutely stunning from uh, Bachmann. I just wish this is the quality of all the engines we get in the UK. But as we all know, it doesn't always work like that. Um. <clears throat> I have this the engine before Christmas, so it has had its run in, and I'm glad to report, absolutely fantastic straight out of the box. So that's the details done. Um, it, the, the tender is virtually um, permanently connected to the loco one, by one of those plugs. I would suggest not uh, taking it out because it's a pain to get back in. And it weigh and um, the engine weighs a good amount, so it should. I don't know what the ho I haven't really tried the haulage capacity of it yet, but it shouldn't be too bad, should it? You know, it's a very well designed uh, loco here. Uh, so I hope you like this like, sort of new design of these reviews in a different place with this nice black um, cloth. Just brings out the colour a bit more, I think. But what is You know, guys, what hasn't changed? Um, we are now going to go straight to the track so we can see this um, <coughs> lovely loco running around. As I said, it has had it running, so it should be working absolutely well, fine. Should be running fine. Um, if it doesn't, that's my fault. Dirty track again because I never clean it because I'm an idiot. So, let's get this uh, loco to the track. Here we are now at the layout and the uh, loco is all set up on the track. So we're going to just move it back and forth just to show you how it goes and then uh, send it around the track. So here we go. 
can see how smooth this thing really is. Very quiet too. You probably can't hear it making any noise at all. That noise in the background is a heater, not the engine making that noise because it's absolutely freezing here in Wales. See ya. Told you. This thing really does run very well. Right, let's send it uh, round the track. Uh, a bit shorter uh, running session than normally I do on my reviews, but as the extension um, is being started tomorrow, which is uh, Monday, uh, the line is, well, unavailable. Well, that's one way of saying it. So I'm getting ready for that, so we can't do as much running. But it gives you an idea um, what this engine looks like while running around. Looks really nice, doesn't it? Really looks nice, nice and smart. The wheels look like they're going slower than other engines is because I believe they're quite large driving wheels. I don't know if that is why they look like that. I'm not sure. So now we come to the part where I say how much it was. Oh dear. That's where this engine really, really lets itself down, to be honest. Um, you can get these in two places. Uh, the National Railway Museum, and I believe that Olivia Trains also has some in stock. Uh, the National Railway Museum want, I think it was £179. Oh dear. Um, I have absolutely no idea why they are charging that much. That's, that's a stupid price, to be honest. It's a, as you know... It's an absolutely amazing model, it really is, but it's about 20, maybe 30 quid too expensive. Um, Olivia Trains are selling them for 200, not even going to bother saying anything about that. Um, what do I give this engine? Detail, 10 out of 10. Running quality, 10 out of 10. So this is a very, very easy 10 out of 10 for this model. Uh, should you get one? Yeah, of course you should. I know I said it's a bit too expensive, but basically just go and get one anyway. Because once they're gone, they're going to go up in price. Uh, they do a few versions of it. They do this one, which you have in, which you have in the front of you. Uh, there is also an LNER version. There is a British Rail version and a British Rail, rail Weathered version. I, um, I don't like the engine in the black at all. I think this is the nicest livery for it. And this particular model is a model of the actual one, which is at one of the NRM uh, premises. So, I would love to go and see the real one. In my opinion, I don't know if it's yours, this is the smartest British loco um, I have on Jubilee Road. Bar none. This thing looks the best. Um, the design back then, when this engine was built, which is... A little you know, a long time ago, they really, really knew how to make them look good. They looked good and they worked well. The machine, 
This is all it was. It was just a machine. But look at it. What a great looking machine it, it is. Well. That's the end of the review. I can't think of anything else to say about this logo, and I don't want to keep you too long. I'm trying to speed these reviews up a little bit. Um, well, leave as usual. It'd be great if you could leave a comment or just a like. I don't mind that. That's always just as nice. And I will be keeping up all the videos during, uh, due, well, during the whole year. Thank you uh, very much for watching, guys, and. Uh, a buy from Jubilee Road.